So, Karen, you've had a long-standing interest in nature and in mindfulness. Yes, it actually goes back to my childhood. And I'm very grateful to my mother, who's still alive, who would take us out, my sister and I, every weekend on our bike, on foot, looking at flowers, looking at trees. Um, and we still do that, less now. Mm-hmm. And then later in life, I also spend a lot of time in the stables with the horses. So we lived on the outskirts of a big city in Germany. So I feel very fortunate that I lived in nature and surrounded by nature so that I could spend a lot of time in nature. And I actually think it's helped me stay sane Mm -hmm. when I was young because it wasn't always so easy at home with my mom not being around very much and my sister and I really not getting on. And so spending so much time outside, I think, helped me stay connected with myself and helped me through some difficult emotional times. Mm -hmm, mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it was a sort of bigger, you know, it was holding me in a certain way mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that I didn't know at the time. Intuitively and unconsciously, I knew that. Yeah, yeah. So that sense of feeling held by nature, even though at the time you may not have been able to articulate it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see that so clearly now, um, because now I know that that is what's happening. Now I have the consciousness and the awareness, um, thanks to my mindfulness practice, which I've had for nine years now, mm-hmm. um, that I I am held in nature. So the knowing that nature is there always, you know, um, in any weather, but also with, you know, it's able to hold any of my uh moods, my mental states, my stories, my ups and downs, my joys as well. Mm-hmm. So it's just a very reliable <laughs> um, companion nature, you know, that I can go to whenever I want. And that can help me um, come back to myself, come back to my senses when I feel lost or unsettled or disorientated. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that, that you're talking about being able to come back to your senses, okay, at the, in these difficult moments. Do you want to uh, describe a little bit what happens, what's the inner experience, mm-hmm. the before, after, during? Yeah, yeah. That's a lovely question, actually, because that's more the how. You know, how does that happen when I go into nature and come back to my senses and mm-hmm. and feel so different afterwards? So what I normally do is, I'm very fortunate, by the way. I live in London with a very beautiful big park next to me. And it only takes me about seven minutes on foot to be in a very beautiful and quiet green space Mm. so when I feel um, when I feel upset or I feel unsettled or restless or a bit stirred up by life I would go and sometimes even for 20 minutes or half an hour I go and I slow down and what I usually do is to come back to my senses to do a lovely exercise which is I see four things that I see. So I look at four things, but really looking. Mm -hmm. That might be I look at the sky and really see the clouds Mm -hmm. and give myself a little bit of time. And then I sort of give myself a little nod. Ah, yeah, clouds. Mm -hmm. And then, so what else do I see? Oh, that tree may, you know, be there in front of me. Oh, and I look properly. I look, oh, the tree. And then maybe there's, you know, we have lots of geese in the park, and I love when they fly in a little group. So I would say, oh, there's some geese. 
or some beautiful blossom or flowers that might be the next thing. So four things I see, and then I would go to hearing sounds, three mm-hmm. things I hear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It might be the geese, or it might be a plane in the air that we sometimes get here, or the children, the birds, mm. lots of sounds generally. And let each sound that I hear and focus on come to me. Sort of really let that sound land in my ear. And then I go to two things I feel. And that might how might be internally how I feel in that moment. Or feeling my feet on the earth, on the earth. Or I feel my clothes on my skin. Mm-hmm. Or maybe if it's windy, the wind in my face. And then at the end, I um, um, focus on one thing that I smell or touch. Hmm. So there may be a smell in the air. Usually there is some smell, which is a lovely thing to do because that's not often what I tune into. So that's the four, three, two, one. (laughs) You know, I couldn't help... Uh, having a big smile as you're describing this. Um, and as I, I, in a way, I'm curious about what the smile is about. Um, and it has the quality of reading a children's book. And I see a child, you know, going and saying, hello, Mr. Tree. Uh, hello, Mrs. Cloud. You know, or just, uh, it has that quality of, um, of wonder, yeah. you know, um, and especially you describe this, you say the setting is moments when you're upset, you're a bit, you know, you're, you're, you have a, a tense and, you know, all these difficult feelings or the kind of nervousness we have in city life. Um, and, and that shift, uh, to getting outside of, you know, these maybe your head uh into encountering the world and 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 greeting it and uh, interacting with it um that's what probably gives me this big smile mm-hmm. and i think what's really powerful about this exercise is, is and that's what i also do and when i run workshops particularly mindfulness workshops is to Really look and to really see. We can often, with so much buzziness in our head and so many distractions, particularly in city life, see, look at the sky, but not see it. Mm -hmm. Or look what's around us. Maybe there are beautiful trees and there's blossom and this and that. But we we can't see it because our mind is so cluttered. Mm Mm-hmm. So this is so powerful because when we really focus on ah, what do I really see right now and sort of name it, ah, you know. Yeah, so I want to maybe uh, underline this. Um, If we just go and say I'm going to look at four things, we could be doing it in a checklist type of thing. Okay, I've seen one thing, I've seen the other one. But you introduce the question of what do I really see, so that, uh, you know, it helps focus your attention to what am I seeing, as opposed to just, okay, I've seen one thing, done. Yeah, yeah, and that's so important, isn't it? That really is at the heart of mindfulness. Mm -hmm. It's paying attention, paying attention to what I see, to what I feel, Emotionally or, or bodily, what I hear. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So paying attention, that quality of paying attention to what is there in that moment and to let that come to us and have an effect. Mm-hmm. And so, again, I want to highlight, as you're describing it, in some way... Um, 
it would be a standard uh, description of mindfulness to say paying attention. But what you're emphasizing is also uh, the relationship that happens. Um, you know, what effect it has on me. So that instead of just looking at something outside, uh, you are allowing yourself to actually experience a relationship that yeah. is happening. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think that is the very process of thing that uh, helps me come back to my senses. Mm -hmm. Through paying attention to what's there, through allowing myself to be in nature and to see what's there, to mm -hmm. hear, to feel, to touch and smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so again, at the risk of <laughs> repeating, uh, when you say be in nature and you add to see, to feel, to smell, um, the be in nature is an active being. Um, it's, uh, it's that creative interaction. It's not just, oh, I happen to be there. Um, but there, yeah, you're allowing yourself to, to be yeah. interacting. Exactly. To be, to be, yeah, to be touched. And as you said, to be in relationship with nature, with what is there. Mm -hmm. And to come into relationship through the senses. And through that, coming back to my coming back into relationship with myself. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. there's a grounding and a coming into the present moment happening when I enter into relationship with nature that I think is so impactful and powerful and that brings me into contact with myself again in the moment and that is what helps so much with any uh, difficult feelings. Mm -hmm. And so, as you enter in relationship with nature, it helps you get into relationship with yourself. Yeah. And so, um, you're more in relationship with yourself in the present moment, as opposed to being in relationship with the clutter, the chatter of your mind. Yeah. And that is, I think, what I described earlier, that I feel held by nature. Mm -hmm. But, of course, it's not nature doing something to me. Mm -hmm. Nature is there for me, and it's through me entering into nature and into relationship. So it's an active coming into relationship and into the present in nature. Yeah. 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 And that feels so holding and healing, if you like. Yeah. 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 And it feels very, very, very nice to hear the, the how, as you said, mm. it happens. Uh, so it's not just, um, okay, I'm going to go out and nature will hold me, but, uh, it's your entering into a relationship. Yeah. It's active, mm -hmm. yeah. It's an active thing. It's an active, um, yeah, it's active, coming into relationship, doing something. It's not passive. It's mm -hmm. not, as you say, you know. And that can happen even without doing this exercise. I find this exercise particularly helpful when when I feel stirred up or angry or upset or whatever runs through my mind and body. But just sometimes by, if you like, mindfully walking around the park, yeah, without necessarily doing, going through the exercise in this way, but being more aware of what's around can be very helpful as well mm -hmm. to ground ourselves, to be, um, to calm down to feel more spacious inside through being open to nature and the environment. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. And so maybe that, yeah, as you say, it's not always necessary to do the exercise, and the exercise is going to be more helpful the more stirred up we are, because it's hard to get out of activation. Yeah, yeah. And um, sometimes just changing environments helps very much. So I often recommend it to people who work in the office a whole day. Yeah, when there's difficult moments, um, just sometimes stepping out, out of the office for 10 minutes, even, you know, if it's not lunchtime, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and just walking around the block, even if that doesn't feel like nature, but really nature is everywhere. So if like New York or London or in any other urban places, there's many buildings many pavements, much concrete. Um, but just stepping out and maybe walking around the block and looking at the sky, because the sky is always there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or in London, we have a lot of, despite the big city, we have a lot of gardens and a lot of uh, sort of front gardens. Yeah, even in front of big buildings, there's a garden usually. So we can walk around the block and look at the front gardens yeah. and discover flowers and trees. So there's always some nature somewhere. And even the, when we have, even in a you know in a way when there is so very little it becomes more precious. It's almost like the flower of the little prince. Yeah. Exactly. Which is so lovely. Such a uh, symbol, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um and so, yeah, just changing environments, just stepping out of our usual environment sometimes and outside can make a huge difference in how we feel. Mm-hmm. Um, so can, in a way, that's like the, that expression of, um, you know, the, the cliche of creativity is thinking out of the box. And so that's literally you take yourself out of the box to see things yeah. in a different way. Yeah. And it really can change perspective. Mm-hmm. It really can change per- perspective. It's my own experience. I see it all the time in the wo- uh, people I work with. When we feel stuck, um, when we feel sort of empty, when we feel closed down or tired, no idea, sort of really dried up, and we step out, something always shifts. Mm-hmm. Something always shifts. Our mind can clear, new ideas can come in, um, or all of a sudden, just by by um, a change in scenery, all of a sudden something comes back that we couldn't remember or couldn't think of or um, that felt very stuck. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden there's a sense of flow again or a sense of, ah, oh, Things are moving again. A sense of coming unstuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so in your work, you actually work with your clients outdoors. I do. Yeah. I take all my clients uh, into the park, into green spaces in London, particularly... Uh, one big park where I live um, nearby, but also organizational clients I take out um, into their nearby green space because we have so many green spaces in London. Mm -hmm. So I feel very fortunate um, that that is the case. And I always say to my clients um, that I prefer to work outside because that's where I think change inside and creativity can happen most naturally. And I really believe that. Um, And I see it in my clients, particularly my one-to-one clients. Some are a little bit skeptical because not many people work like me. Mm -hmm. But when they come, at the end, often they say, oh, that was great. And they can't quite say what or why. What felt great? Why? Why is it different? 
And that lets me know how it's working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always have to be explained. It's just an intrinsic, I think, feeling of rightness or being in the right place when we are nature. Because we come from nature. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's our place of origin, if you like. You know, we come from but so when you were talking about um, what you do on your own uh, you very beautifully described this interaction Um, now what happens when actually instead of just one person and nature you have two people who are uh, you know very absorbed in what's happening in between in the communication but also nature. You know, how does that uh, work? Mm. So it works that um, when I take clients out into the park, I always walk on the grass. So I never stay on the path. And that already, when we enter green space and we walk on the grass, there's a slowing down. So that helps very much. And then we can talk. And then sometimes, naturally, we would stop because my client is thinking and processing and reflecting and there's lots going on inside and exploring what's going on. And then sometimes they would stop. And sometimes in those pauses, I would suggest, oh, what about, you know, opening up a little bit and... Have a little look around what's here right now. You know, when someone gets a little bit, I can see it when people are sort of more head down and looking on the grass or just in front of them, being sort of a little bit bogged down in what's going on for them. Sometimes I invite people to, ah, oh, you know, to look around. And that's the beauty, isn't there? There's so much there mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. we then look around. Take a breath. So, and that can happen without any words, just sort of an invitation of looking, of opening up to nature around. And then we would continue to walk. And the conversation would continue, or maybe silence happens. You know, we would continue walking silently. And that works well outside as well. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, rather than sitting inside, so walking next to each other in silence can be, um, can be very enjoyable and helpful. Yeah. Also. Yeah, yeah. So that's how it works. Talking, stopping, looking, feeling our feet on the ground, stopping again. Mm-hmm. So it gives, um, uh, in a way, a rhythm or a different rhythm or an expansion that the relationship is not just um, um, with the problem, with the issues or just with the two people, but there, you know, that that larger container is there. Absolutely. Yeah. The larger container that is nature that yeah. holds both of us. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think that's why I, I do what I do. It's so, it's, such conducive conditions to be outside in nature, mm-hmm. supportive, soothing, helping us to slow down quite naturally without, as soon as we enter green space, people slow down from their busy sort of uh, um, pace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I say, oh, let's slow down a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as I'm listening to you, I get with the idyllic version of, um, you know, green and ideal temperature and so on. But what happens when it's really cold or it's rainy or? (laughs) Well, I can reassure you, it doesn't get as cold here as in New York Mm -hmm. or in other places. Um, I get to ask this question all the time. And what I say is, that I work in any weather and in any temperature 
and in any season, because all of that is part of nature. So the weather is part of nature, the rain, the cold, the wet, Mm -hmm. the heat, um, the mud. And it's rather wonderful, actually, to do that because it's uncompromising, it's clear, and it's... um, and it meets us where we are in any moment. And it's also requiring us to meet nature where it is at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. So what I say is I work in any weather, in any season, because it's part of nature, and um, say to people, wear raincoat, wear warm clothes, wear sturdy shoes. And in the winter I say, bring a woolly hat and gloves. <laughs> and in the summer I say bring some water and if you need a sun hat mm-hmm. although there are many trees here in the park so I find my way around um, under the trees if someone doesn't like the sun mm-hmm. 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 and in the winter or autumn the trees are also a beautiful um a place to protect ourselves or to find some shelter. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, in a way, as I'm listening to you, I'm having also a vision of um, uh, how just doing this slows down the process uh, because it's not about, okay, let's go into this room and in the limited amount of time we have, we're going to be as efficient as possible. But in a way, there's already that sense of, but we're going to include the walking, we're going to include the looking, we're going to include the maybe the occasional shivering or the dealing with, oh, there's too much sun. Uh, and so we're going to include what could be perceived of as distractions. Um, into this larger process of, um, you know, of digesting issues. Yeah. Yeah, and um, that's actually lovely the way you describe it. I think that's spot on. It's all part of it, um, of being outdoors, finding a way of meeting ourselves and nature, Mm -hmm. and then... um, doing what needs doing so that one can be comfortable outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. If we need to put our sun hat on, we do that. I often put, you know, put another layer on, then I take it off again. And that can happen while, while walking, while stopping. I have a client at the moment um, who's been coming all summer. And the first thing, not in the first session, but from the second session onwards, would always take off his shoes Mm. and walk barefoot. And he just laughed, laughed, laughed it, you know, and it slowed him down so much, he said himself, just doing that, something so different and really feeling the grass and the earth. And we did a lot of mindfulness work together in nature. And nature is so helpful because there is the grass to be felt. Mm-hmm. It's so enjoyable. And uh, the sound of the trees, the poplar trees, make these beautiful sounds in the wind. It's a little bit like paper rustling. Mm-hmm. Um, and the uh, clouds here in London with the wind change all the time. And then the colors, of course, in the trees and the grass with the heat, and then it rains again and and the green changes. So with him, we did a lot of mindfulness um, work actually coming into the present moment, slowing down, grounding, because he's someone who's very much in his head. Mm -hmm. And so he's benefited greatly from being outdoors. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's something he can do on his own as well. He doesn't necessarily meet, need me. Mm-hmm. But now he has some tools and he can go outside himself and uh, do those exercises. What's interesting as you describe it this way is a sense of shifting the notion of who or what I am. Um, and that we tend to identify who or what I am with, um, you know, occupation, with our thoughts, with, uh, you know, all kinds of internal things or um, relationship to some social norms. Um, and what you're describing is actually a moment where experientially um, we perceive who we are um, in relationship to our physical interaction with nature. Yeah, exactly. And when we do that, the physical interaction with nature and using our senses and, and entering into that relationship, active relationship, active relating to nature, rather than just taking it for granted, it's there, and separating ourselves from it, through the physical contact and physical relating to nature, I think our sense of tight sense of self or over-identifying with ourselves or a certain role Mm -hmm. or a certain view we have of ourselves can loosen up. Yeah, and so we feel a little bit more spacious inside and can sort of review certain views of our, you know, how we identify with ourselves or how we, uh, yeah, view ourselves, be- you know, the beliefs we hold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's a different experience of who we are. Yeah. And so, um, so then we get to see that side which we normally yeah. don't see as much. Exactly. And I, I think that, again, comes back to physically relating and through our senses, actively relating with nature, again, allows us to sense that we are so much more than what we think we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when we feel sometimes so tight and narrow and small inside, being in that bigger container of nature and connecting and relating to it, we can, it can help us really sense, ah, there's more. Mm -hmm. I'm not just that, what I think. I'm so much more and sometimes I don't know how much more and what exactly. But ah, there's a, opening and the spaciousness and possibilities and then through that we can have a different sense of ourselves that often can be more you know a bit more positive a bit more uplifting a little bit more kind yeah yeah Mm. so this sounds like uh, might be a good place to to leave it, but do you have anything that you would want to add? No, that feels like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Yeah, thank you very much. This is part of the Active Pause podcast at activepause.com. We yeah. normally don't see as much. Exactly. And I, I think that again comes back to physically relating and through our senses, actively relating with nature, again, allows us to sense that we are so much more than what we think we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we feel sometimes so tight and narrow and small inside, being in that bigger container of nature and connecting and relating to it, we can, it can help us really sense, ah, there's more. Mm -hmm. I'm not just that, what I think. I'm so much more, and sometimes I don't know how much more and what exactly. But ah, there's a 
opening and the spaciousness and possibilities. And then through that, we can have a different sense of ourselves. That often can be more, you know, a bit more positive, a bit more uplifting, a little bit more kind. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So this sounds like uh, might be a good place to to leave it. But do you have anything that you would want to add? No, that feels like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Yeah, thank you very much. This is part of the Active Pause podcast at activepause.com.